Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 75, we're going to take a look at microservices data services, and I'll describe what those are and the pros and cons and trade-offs of using a data service within a microservices ecosystem. Let me describe what a data service is. Within a typical microservices ecosystem, we tend to share a single schema, whether that be in a physical database or not. As you can see from the left-hand side here, I've got three different kinds of microservices all sharing the same data. This is fairly common within microservices, and it's called a data domain. However, the question is, should we have all three of those services, such as the ones in the middle there, all talk to the same schema, or should we front that schema within that database uh, with a dedicated service to act as kind of the data abstraction layer or data access layer to that? And so that's really the question. Uh, let me show you some positives or some advantages of doing this and also some negatives because as all of us know by now in microservices or any architecture, uh, the answer to every question, of course, is it depends. And so let's see what it depends on. If we take a look at utilizing what's called a data service, and this is a special kind of microservice. I call it a data service because its single purpose is to front that data for all other microservices and corresponding instances to those. And so let's talk about four of the advantages. Um, the first advantage is the fact that because we have a single service fronting that data, I can have a centrally managed data cache, in other words, in a single in-memory data grid or database, uh, so that I can increase significantly the performance and that cache is only located in one place. Whether I use a cache or not, the other major advantage of a data service is that I now have a single connection pool manager. You see, without the use of a data service, that connection pool is located in every microservice because every microservice is separately deployed in its own container. And so consequently, the connection pool to a database that holds that particular schema that I own uh, would be in each one of those instances. And so, for example, here I would have six different connection pools, but here I can pull those connections together so that I can manage them better uh, within that data service. Also, another interesting advantage is that I can now abstract the database and SQL queries from those particular services. If I need to get a customer, um, one of those services would then make a remote call to this data service with a different endpoint that says get customer data. And then uh, the SQL or SQL would be contained within this red data service right here. And what that allows is not only a separation of the contract between uh, the table structure and the data I'm returning, but also allows me to potentially version database changes so that now if I do happen to drop a column, I can now do transformation to that separate contract going up to that microservice. These are all the advantages, everybody, of why um, I have at least been seeing an increase in the use of these kind of data services. But let me talk about some of the trade-offs. Uh, the first trade-off associated with this is fault tolerance. You see, if I happen to lose this service or this service goes down, all of a sudden every other instance that needs to access that data or any other service also correspondingly goes down. And so that's the first problem. Uh, the second one that I don't like about data services is the aspect of performance. You see, I'm not talking directly to a database and have that connection anymore. It's actually going through a remote access protocol, whether it be REST messaging over to that data service. And so we do incur some latency. Now, I will say um, this is one of the places I do tend to use Google's Remote Procedure Call, or GRPC. As a matter of fact, uh, there is a lesson that I've done in my Software Architecture Monday on 
uh, GRPC, Google Remote Procedure Call. And it's, uh, it's somewhere towards the end in uh, the 50s, I think, or somewhere around there, but you can actually look and scope under the microservices link uh, to actually find that. But I would encourage you to look at that GRPC. But this is one use case where I do use GRPC to satisfy some of that performance and latency issue. But also, we do have some scalability and throughput issues. And so in other words, as I start scaling up my services and create more instances, I'm going through a single service to get to the data. And suddenly what's going to happen is I'm not going to be able to keep up with that throughput. Now you might say, well, Mark, the easy way to solve that is to have multiple instances of the data service. And that handles fault tolerance as well as scalability and throughput. However, if that's the case, we no longer have a single in-memory data grid. If I'm going to have a single place for caching, now that has to be a replicated cache. And that gets much more expensive and complicated. And number two, now I no longer have a single connection pool. But if I start scaling out the data service, I've got multiple connection pools, which starts replicating the whole problem of actually using a data service. And so uh, my intention here was not to say whether you should use it or not, but actually just demonstrate to you and show you some of the trade-offs associated with a data service and what a data service actually is. And so for more information, I'm very excited uh, to announce uh, the Fundamentals of Software Architecture book. It's a brand new book that both myself and Neil Ford have written. Um, you can actually get it through the link here on O'Reilly. Um, right now is the time of this recording. Right now um, is the pre-release of that book, but the full book will be published on February 25th of 2020. Also, of course, you can go to Software Architecture Monday, where all these lessons are, where every other Monday I do a new lesson in software architecture. Also, I do offer private training classes, which you can get to from that link, and also public events and public classes as well. If you go to my upcoming events page, um, you can see where I'm at at various conferences and also public trainings around in both the United States, Europe, and also in India. And so this has been lesson number 75, Microservices Data Services. Again, my, my name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening.